Hey guys, it's going to do my again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you if you haven't subscribed to the channel to please do so by just clicking on the button below to basically get notified of new videos. And today I'm going to be continuing the air foundation videos. I show you how to do body tracking, specifically hand tracking to actually draw around the area that you're filming on. So what I want to do today is I want to add a couple more options to that implementation. I want to be able to change the minimum value that is going to determine when to actually start destructing the curve that we're creating when we're drawing. The reason for that is because I want to be able to draw and then have the curve last longer. So let's actually jump into Unity and start working on that. And I'm going to be adding more features that we'll look into when we're working in Unity. Thank you guys. All right guys, so this is a scene that we created last time where I show you how to do drawing with body tracking. So what I want to do is I don't want to change this scene because I want this to be intact if you want to refer to the previous video and want to make sure that you have everything from that video. So I'm not going to touch it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be duplicating it and actually renaming the name of the scene. So if we look for human body tracking drawing, we can, let's see, let me go right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clone it just the, and then just call it with options because we're going to be adding options to this scene. So that's the first thing that I want to do. And then the other thing that I want to do is go to build settings. And then if you look at it, I have this human body tracking drawing. I'm going to be adding it as well as an open as a scene that I want to build. And the other thing that I also wanted to do, you see this body tracking. This is one of the first ones. I'm actually going to move both of these ones to the very top. The reason for it is because I want them to have to be close to the other body tracking. So that's that piece and I'm going to check the one from the previous video and let's just check the one that we're working on right now because we're going to be building that as soon as we're done. All right, so now that we have these, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and add a couple options. So we have this debug on and debug off that I wasn't using on the previous video. In fact, let me go back to the previous video and then remove the options because we're not even using it. And I'm also going to remove the toggle, all of this debug, and then we should have everything clean now. Now if I go back to this one, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start looking at the implementation of what we need to do here. So we don't need to do, we don't need to record poses, at least not on this video. Debugging, I, I don't, I'm not really concerned about, I'm not really concerned about debugging for now. And I'm going to keep uh, an options toggle. And actually the options is the entire thing. The toggle is this button right here. So the other thing that I want to do as well, so if I go and right click on the canvas, click on UI, I want to add, I'm going to be adding a couple of sliders and I'm going to show you why that is. So the first one is going to be, we can probably just also change the size because it is a little bit small. You can just, I'm just going to scale it. Maybe do something like, I'll probably do two, two, two on every axis. Okay, so we're going to be putting that one right here. I think that's fine. And then if we go to our skeleton, specifically the skeleton transparent, and we expand this, let's go into and find our hands. So we're going to go into the spine, go through all the spines. And this is the component that I showed you last time that we needed to modify so that we could actually add a trail renderer to the hands. So we're going to look at that component. So let me go into the right hand and then finally, finally the cube. So there's a couple of components in here that we could modify that I could do it at the start of the game, but I want to be able to modify them in real time. And specifically one is going to be time and time is important because time is going to, it's going to basically tell us how quick we can destruct the, the curve. So if we draw a line and specifically we're drawing a line, if, they ha if we have these to point to point A, it's going to be this truck, you know, much quicker than doing it in 10 seconds. So it's going to be point A versus doing it in 10 seconds. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I'm going to actually, oh, and this is actually in seconds. So this is actually point A seconds. And then, so it is, it is accurate what I, what I just told you. So if we have it in 10 seconds, the curve is going to last for 10 seconds before it gets destroyed. So what I'm going to do here is for the slider, I'm going to add also a new text box. Let's go ahead and add a text and I'm going to put it right above it. This one, I'm just going to make it, let's go ahead and make it wide. 
y and then not y <laughs> so this is going to be curve time and we can probably also resize that as well just a tiny bit because otherwise it's going to be a little hard to see so we can do probably like 16 it, it's fine so i'm going to do that and i'm also going to resize this the options here so we can see everything so one of them is going to be curve time the other one it's going to be let me go ahead and move this around and the text box i'm going to put it at the very top i think that's fine and we can probably just do curve there we go and then my slider it's going to be somewhere somewhere in here it's fine okay so this one is going to be my curve time text excellent and then the next thing that i want to do if you look at if we look at that component again the one that we're working on so we can destroy it pretty quickly or we can destroy it you know at a longer time so i'm going to say that the minimum is going to be 0.5 and the maximum is going to be something like 10 i think 10 is a good number so let's go ahead and go into my slider here minimum value it's going to be 0.5 and then the maximum number is going to be 10 that way if and then what i'm going to do for the default i'm going to do the number that we have right now which is 0.8 that way we can start the curve there and then if we increase the time the curve is going to stay longer and so let me actually rename this as well it's going to be curve time slider awesome so i think i think we're good with this component i'm gonna i'm gonna move it down and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna clone this one as well this one is going to be a different component. So if we go back into the cube and we look at our, our trail renderer, we can see that we also have a minimum vertex distance. This one is really important if you want to. So what's going to happen is when the distance between one vertex and another one, it's greater than 0 .0, 0 0.01, it's going to create a new, basically a new point. If you have this number be large, the curve is not going to look it's basically going to be flat because let's say that you set this to one the distance is going to be greater which means that it's going to look more like a flat it's not it's more like a flat curve basically a straight a straight line instead of having curvature so this allows me to create more curvature because i'm adding more points to the curve all right so this one is currently set to point to point zero one let me go into here and then also change so i'm going to set it i'm actually going to set it to that to be the minimum the value that is get set by default is going to be that value the maximum number i think i'm going to stick with a number that is low so i'm going to do one now we can just you know go from from that minimum value to to one and then what i'm going to do on this one if we look at the name of it it's minimum vertex distance so i'm just going to do the same thing here minimum vertex distance slider excellent and then what i'll do here is for the label we can just call this text to be honest that way we don't have to rename we don't have to rename what the component is inside it's more this 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 basically specify what the component is so we don't need to do the one that is inside all right so i think i have everything except i need to actually rename this as well so it's going to be minimum vertex distance excellent and now that I'm looking at this, I am more leaning towards just making it how we had it initially. And then we can just probably just reposition everything. We can probably move this down a little bit more. Move. Let me just grab the value of Y. And yeah, I think that's fine. And then what I'll do is I'll grab the same value, paste it on the other component. Grab these two components that are the text boxes. And I'm going to move them down a tiny bit more. We can probably just make it 15. I am very obsessed with getting things right in UI, so that's why that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Okay, so we have human body tracking on the on the instructions. So we can just say human body tracking with with options. This is so that you know that one of them is without options, one of them is with options. All right, and then point your camera towards the human, move your hands around. To draw as a body gets tracked by your kid and we can say something like change let's see let me just not do caps change the options below to affect the curve the draw curve i think it's it's more correct 
All right, so I think um, I think I'm happy with what we have right now. So now let's go ahead and focus on some of the coding that we're going to have to do to affect the basically affect the curve. And to do that, I'm going to go into my you know my actual UI component. So if we go here, you can see that I have a human body tracker text, human body tracker text, and let me make sure that I have. I don't think I actually changed that on the. Let me go ahead and make sure. You know, I actually didn't change any of these last time because it was mainly, it was mainly all the UI. It wasn't, there wasn't a lot of code to be done. And let me just look and see this human body tracker script. I don't want to touch this one because it might be, yeah, I think I'm going to leave, I think I'm going to leave this one intact, specifically because it's getting used on the other video. And this one on the UI piece, I am going to remove this component. We're going to create a new one. Okay, so I have everything here, right? Let me look at this component really quick. So this component has an skeleton. And if we look at the component, it's the skeleton prefab. So if we go here, this is going to be the prefab that gets affected, and which is this one right here. And if we look at, if we look at it, this is the skeleton that is getting that is getting created as soon as the body as soon as the body gets basically instantiated. So we're going to have to make some changes to this specifically because we're going to be modifying the component that is inside the skeleton. So we're going to have to do some changes on this one. I'm just debating whether I want to make a change on this one or create a new one. And I think I'm leaning towards creating a new one so that I don't touch the previous example. So what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and go ahead and clone it. It's going to call it human body tracker with options. We can just do it with options. I'll just copy that name and then we can just modify the class as well. Now we should have this one that is the original one and then the new one that we're just creating. All right, so I think I'm happy with everything. So a few things to consider. We're going to have to change the curve time and the minimum vertex distance. So if we change that, we want to affect the skeleton that is getting instantiated. So let me see what we're going to do here. So let me let me change a couple of things in here. The first thing that I can that I don't that I don't want to have, I don't want to have a skeleton offset. And the reason is because I don't I don't really need it in this video. But let's leave it just in case you guys want to use it on the on another video. So on another example. So let's go ahead and focus on a couple of things in here. So I'm going to need two sliders. So we're going to go ahead and add a slider. So it's going to be a slider. And then this slider is going to be the first one. So the first one is going to be, let's go into our canvas. One is going to be the curve time slider. So I'm just going to copy that name. And then I'm just going to make it lowercase. So it's going to be our first one. And then I'm going to be bringing in a uh, namespace, which is the Unity that UI. There we go. So it's going to be the first one. And then the second one is going to be our minimum vertex distance slider. So I'm just going to copy that as well. Let's copy the name. And I pass a little bit in the beginning because honestly, this is not planned. I just normally I just come up with ideas as I'm, as I'm working on a video. And, and I think that just just makes it fun than making a video that is just very rigid and I have to I have to attain to a script, which is the reason why I like making videos my way because I can just do what I what I just enjoy doing which is just creativity. All right, so now, now these two components are added. So what I'm going to do is when on the awake method is when I'm going to do the binding. So let me just see if I have an awake method here. I don't, that's okay. We'll just create it one. This will be awake. And then I'll just add the bindings to the curve, the curve time slider. So it's going to be on click or on value, on value change. And then we can just add a listener. We don't have the listener yet. It's OK. We'll just add it in a second. I'm going to also grab the other slider. And it's going to be this one. All right, so, so a couple of things that we're going to need is we're going to have to track the, when, when this gets changed, I want to be able to change the, I want to be able to change the body, basically the information that we have on our hands, which is a cube that has a trail render. So let me go ahead and look at where we're instantiating the, the new skeleton, which is right here. You can see that this just has a, a bone controller. 
it gets created from the skeleton prefab. And let me see if, so I think one thing that we can do here is now that I have a human bone controller, I'm gonna create a new a new method. This one is going to be apply, apply changes to curve. And then, yeah, I think that's fine. And then we can just pass in the instance. And this is gonna be the human bone controller. Excellent, which is the component that we are we're getting. And we're creating this guy. So I think this is this is fine. And then what I'll do here, let me see what I have. So I know that the skeleton, it's in the, so here's the skeleton root. And I know that all the components are inside of this guy. So what I can do is I can say get components in children. And then the component that I'm looking for, it's going to be the trail render. So that's a component that we're looking for. It doesn't matter where it is. We know it's in the child's. So we're just going to find it. And that's what this is going to do. And we can just do var. I don't like using vars, but I think in this case, it, it works fine. And OK, so that's that piece. And then the next thing that I, I want to do is I want to get a couple of the values. So we need the minimum vertex distance. So that's going to be attached to the the minimum vertex distance is lighter value. So we're going to add the value. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is we also need the time. So how long does the trail take to fade out, which is the property that we added for curve time. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to grab Q, uh, curve time is lighter, that value. And then before I do this, I want to make sure that this is getting this get all reference. That way it doesn't throw an, an error. So I'm going to say as long as this is, let me make sure that I do that's not equal to null. And the minimum vertex slider that's not equal to null. Then we, we basically allow doing what I'm doing. That way we don't, yeah, we don't get any exceptions if we try to access the slider without being referencing the inspector. Okay, so we're checking there and then I'll just do just for, you know, for references. So that we know what's happening if in case we get this, we're just gonna do, do log error and then curve. We can just say curve time slider and minimum vertex distance slider need to be set. Okay, so we got that going, I have this going. And now that I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking about this. I don't need this because this is gonna take care of that. So I think we're good as far as that goes. And let me let me check a couple more things. So this is gonna be when the bodies change. And if we change the slider, so so thinking about it, now <laughs> let me go back to this. Because we're gonna need to update it if the, if the curve gets updated. So this trail render, I'm going to actually create a private variable here. And I'm gonna show you why. So I'm just gonna say private trail render and then trail render, because we're gonna need to access it at any point. So I'm just going to say trail renderer, going to make it private. And then what I'll do here is I'll just set it. I'll just set it to that. And the other method that I'm going to need is on a slider, on a sliders change. I'll just add one that is plural. And then that will apply to both of the sliders that I have. And then what I'll do here is I'm actually going to do this. And there we go. Let's just copy the whole thing and I'll show you what we're going to do. So this should already be instantiating. So I'm going to say if trail render is not null, meaning that we did get that component, then we're going to do, we're going to do this. And then what's going to happen is we're going to just change that because we know that the trail render was found already. The body was found already. So we can just change these values. And that way we can go back here and I can just say, okay, I'm going to be pointing that listener to this method. And then I can also do the same thing with this method. And if you notice, this is going to take a flow. So I'm just going to say value. And instead of doing what I'm doing here, we can just say, we can just grab the value and then grab the value there, which means that I'm going to have to change this and also make it too. So we're gonna need we're gonna need to. I thought I was I wasn't I wasn't gonna be needing to. So we can just say on slider on curve time the slider change. We do this, which means that the only one that I need to change is gonna be the time. 
and then the other one is going to be the minimum vertex on minimum vertex distance slider change then I'm going to change this one and now we have them independent and this one is going to be for time and the vertex is going to be this other one right here and let me see okay there we go all right yeah this is a pointer to basically like a, like a lambda or a delegate so we don't really call the method we point to the method all right so we have that we have that going we also have the the changes in here that we need to do so we're going to be applying the curve changes on the curve changes on curve apply changes on curve I think it sounds better to say to a curve all right so apply changes to curve we're checking to see if these letters were set we're going to get the trail render from the human bone controller all the children's and then we're going to be getting the values that we have on the sliders and then applying them and then what I'll do here is we'll have to call it so I'm going to say human body controller and that's what we're going to be passing so apply trail render option options okay and I think we're good and if it was updated we want to do the same thing so I'm going to in this case it's all it's already going to be it's already going to be instantiated so I can just pass it in and then if it was removed we don't need to do anything all right so I think I think I'm happy with what we have and thinking about this we can probably just do instead of doing it in this method we want to make sure that initialize skeleton joins let's go ahead and do it right after we we have all everything set so I'm gonna do it right after the we try to get the value from a dictionary if it's been already in track and then if, if it has already been added and then we initialize the skeleton joins we apply a body pose and then at the very end this is what we're gonna do okay so I think I think I'm good with with those changes I'm good with that change and perfect I think that's that's everything that we're gonna need for now let me go back in here into unity and see what I'm missing as far as the components that we need to add so I show you this component before I'm gonna actually I was gonna do copy and paste but I can't do that because it's a new one we're gonna have to add a new one which is gonna be the human body tracking with options perfect and then this is gonna ask us for a skeleton prefab so if we go into our skeletons we created a skeleton transparent which is the same one that I did in the previous video I'm also going to be binding the curve time slider and also going to be binding the minimum vertex distance perfect and then we're also going to need a human body manager so that's going to be in the air session origin so we're going to associate it with that and that should be everything that we need to do right now and let me make sure so the last thing that I think I need to do that I don't that I don't have in this is I need to dismiss and I also need to close this and and we can I'm just thinking about if we need it yeah let's go let's go ahead and do it so that we can have they also gonna need uh, a reference to this panel so that we can we can hide it so let me do that as well and I'll just add it just add it to this class we can just do private button this means button and then this is also going to be serializable and then I'm also going to need the panel which in this case it is uh, we'll just make it a game object so the panel is just going to be a game object you say game object and then panel it's actually the welcome panel okay so that's those two and the options I'm going to so this is so that we can toggle it or we can close it I'm actually not going to allow people to close it let's go ahead and remove that at least on this video and then we can do it on the next video if we need to but a toggle is pretty it's pretty straightforward so it's basically going to be checking the state if it's hidden show if it's if it's showing hide it but I want to dismiss this one for sure so what I'm going to do is we're also going to do an unclick at a listener and then we can just say this means welcome panel okay and what I'll do here I'll just say void 
this means welcome panel and methods are always in C sharp capital so let's go ahead and make him capital and then what I'll do I'll just say welcome panel that's I can just say get up game object set active equal false so we're gonna hide it and then I think we have everything that we need there and then the last thing that I'll do is I'll just attach associate those through the inspector so we're just gonna grab the panel here and also the dismiss button and the last thing that I'll do is I'll just move this up I like to have everything that, that is UI and, and serializable at the very top or at least combine and I think we're good let me just check in everything make sure that everything works and all right and we have everything set all right so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and build it and I'll show you as soon as it's finished building to my device and then I'll do a video so you can watch how it works all right guys so I got this running on my device and it actually worked pretty well the there's a couple of changes that I still need to make but I'm gonna show you what I have right now so I have two different demos so demo one is the one that you saw before I just have different options you can see that I'm that I'm drawing and you know everything everything works well in in that and the curve is actually really smooth so then I'm just doing some different motions just so that we can see how fast it's getting destroyed in in demo 2 I'm making changes to the curve you can see at the beginning I'm basically changing the curve time just to see how that's going to affect the the changes on the curve so you can see one of them is getting destroyed quicker and that's the one on my left hand this one right here has a much longer lifespan so that's why you can see that at the that is basically staying longer it's not getting destroyed as fast i still need to make some changes on the on the curve because it's, it is not as smooth but i think for you know for this version this is this is fine and i'm just basically just playing around and having fun so a couple of things that i that i need to change that i that i'm going to be fixing on the next video is the trail render that we have if you notice only one is staying longer not the other one and that's because i'm only getting and trying to find one of the trail renders i'm going to make some changes and improvements so that we can grab both of the trail renders and we can make changes to both of them at the same time i'm also going to increase the size of the sliders because it's really hard to to select the sliders and that's why my phone was shaking at the beginning so i'm going to change that i'm going to add basically two different trail renders and the last thing that i also want to do is i want to be able to change the colors in real time so we're going to be adding an option for that so for now i think this is a good start and if you guys have any questions about about what i just showed you please let me know in the comments thank you guys all right guys thank you much for watching this video today i really appreciate your time and if you have any questions about anything that i just showed you in unity let me know in the comments also be sure to check out gamedev.net because i have amazing resources for developers for game developers and also find me in patreon.com where i'm basically posting information about what i'm doing in my office behind the scenes when i'm working on projects and also i put early access to source code whenever i'm creating new posts in patreon.com so thank you very much guys